I'm going to pick on my previous students too. If you guys need, if you want to interject anything that you think is helpful to your students, the 244s almost took over my class today because they kept suggesting things, which is great, and I love it. So if you guys anything you want to add and tell your classmates about, please do. Or if I'm out right now. Graphing calculator is needed for this class. We're going to get to that next. Let's talk about that. <laughs> Ish. Ish. I'm just getting ahead of you. No, it's okay. You're, you're doing free I'm it's excited. I'm, I'm excited too. It's your segue for me. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, you're right. You guys know forever since earlier. There they are. Uh, as far, let's get to the technology in a minute. Um, I think I may have confused a few of you with a textbook. I got a, a few emails. I forget which class emailed me. All my classes use open source textbooks. Um, I call it an optional free open source textbook. You don't actually need to have it, although it would be a great resource for this preemptive study of the subjects. Great for that. Um, I took a survey last term, all my classes, and I asked them how much, if at all, did you use the textbook? And the responses were uh, every day, once a week, occasionally, we had a textbook. Question mark. And it was funny, 97% of the students said they used it occasionally or never. And I was curious about that, and then I realized the definition of a textbook in my world is different than the definition of a textbook I think everybody else's. More on that momentarily. The textbook starts here, though. If you click on this link, which I will, you get this beautiful 700-plus page document that Dean and Alowski, Barbara and Susan, put together for us. These guys work down at a school in California, which I do not remember right now. I'm sure it's listed in here somewhere. They created this book about five years ago and gave it away for free to the world. Nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally nice. nice. Totally nice. No advertisements because it's a very static mm -hmm. document. The 105 book was full of ads. Yeah. This was a little more interactive. But that's okay. Ron Larson's a genius. Love you. <laughs> but this is 700 pages of every bit of statistics you could possibly ever want to know in an intro course. It is yours. Do with it as you will. You might never look at it. That's okay, too. But if you need extra, pre, post, more, it's all in here. I want to come back to this and talk about assessment. But if you scroll through, everything we do in the course is buried in here. I have references later on that point you to certain pages so you're not scouring through trying to find it. But everything is, this is our, if you will, a textbook. It's free. If you want to buy a copy of it, you can, i got to fix that. Physical spot, psychical. <laughs> Physical copies right here. You can purchase it for a whopping $18. Nice. The one thing about that is that I think they updated the edition, and all my stuff is based off of the previous edition, which is the one I just opened. So that's the one I'm going to keep referring to. If it gets ridiculous and you buy the book and you want to figure it out, it shouldn't be that much different, although I heard one student complaining it was a nightmare. I can't rate nightmares. It may have been slightly inconvenient and it became, oh my god, but I don't, I mean, we can talk about that and figure it out. The, the copy that I'm referring to constantly, though, is the one that's linked right here. So me and Barbara and Susan's gift to you. So hope you, hope you can use it if you want to use it. As far as technology, Candace, a great question. You said you can't find your 84, 83? Or no, I have. I just have one that's a little smaller and easier to carry, so I wasn't sure if totally we fine. To... It's totally fine. It's totally fine. That's totally, she stole yours? Yeah. I don't know, between you and your mom. It's totally fine, whatever technology you want to use. I know the 83 and the 84 and the 86 pretty well, so if you've got those floating around, that's great. I am going to have you guys using Excel. Most of the assessments in this class are done out of class. So if you don't have, I'm not worried about you like using your cell phone, oh, yeah, because some teachers will say you're cheating because you're using your cell phone. I want you to cheat, because I want you to use those resources. I want, I'm going to send you out to go online and source things. As, it's a stats class. You need to go find data. I mean, I'm going to give you a bunch, but I want you to go find some too. So almost all assessments in this class are done outside of class. The ones that are done inside of class, I'll most often pair you up with one or two other people. And as long as somebody has some kind of technology, you'll be fine. And the chance of putting three people together not having one person with either a phone or a calculator is probably shrinking away to zero. Every once in a while, I'll have programs that I've written for the 83 and the 84. I do carry around uh, a projector with the 83 and the 84, which I'll default to for certain calculations. Okay, Cause I, and I, I'm still clinging on to that because a lot of you are coming from Math 111 or Math 105 where we still have those because you're coming up through the algebra-based curriculum that makes you use one. I don't want you to throw it away. I want you to get your money's worth out of it. It costs you enough. I want you to use it for every bit that you can use it for. But there are other tools that you'll learn too. And I'm assuming you've never used the other tools. I'm assuming you've never turned Excel on. Okay? I'm making the assumption you've never opened Excel and never used it before. Some of you are laughing because you're like, dude, I used it like five minutes ago. That's okay. 
But for someone who's never used it before, if I just throw you into Excel, it's going to be a daunting experience. I had a wonderful feeling from 244 about two hours ago, one of my students said, I had never opened Excel before I took your 243 class, and I was scared out of my mind. I opened the first project that used it, and she's like, oh, I can learn from this. That's what I needed to hear. I need, I, that's why I write them the way I write them. As the course goes on, I might leave more and more out because as the course goes on, you're getting better at it, right? But those first few assessments when you're using Excel, very, 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 very pedagogical. Very, very, click this button, open this. Here's a sheet, now click on that sheet. So, we'll learn together. I learn constantly, hopefully you do too. Uh, so technology is kind of open-ended. When we have to use something together, I'll teach the 83, 84. Um, apparently you can download and put it on your phone now or your iPad. Uh, yes, you can, good. I, yeah, I've been told. So that's fantastic. You can, you can emulate the TI on your iPad. If you have a laptop, I know for a fact you can emulate the, uh, the, sheet, the uh, calculator on your, on your PC laptop. So we got options. We got options. Yeah, you can on your uh, cell phone, too. There's a free app. Excellent. And, and I, I remember somebody telling me that. And the one that, here's, I'm showing my age again. But somebody showed me this Andy83 app. And I, and I remember this is on my head an old Android phone as one of those bulletproof commando smartphones you can't break. You also can't do anything else, it crashes all the time. But I, would, I downloaded it and it worked for a bit. And then for some reason I got rid of it and tried to re download it. And the time I tried to do that, TI had sued the kid because he was using their images and their logos. But instead of TI 83, it's an Andy 83. <coughs> so it, it, I can't keep track of apps. <clears throat> they change too quickly in my in my estimation. Some of the apps I was helping design five years ago are gone. They bankrupted themselves. So I know they exist, and I'm happy to sit with you guys and try to figure out which ones that are good. I just can't do it like in the middle of class. Office hours are fine. After class is walking to office hours, walking back and forth. Email, let's figure it out. I just can't keep track of them on a regular basis because that's a full time job in and of itself. Trying to understand the app market. And how? I, seriously, economic. We got business people in here, right? How do apps make anybody money? This is a discussion I want to have at some point. I want to have a discussion about, because all these free apps and this advertising, how does Facebook make money? I want to know all this stuff. I want to figure all this stuff out. It all seems like hoo-ha to me. But, but that doesn't mean I can't be convinced otherwise. So I'll sit down, have a cup of coffee sometime, and we'll, we'll talk hard. We'll talk hard and understand this laughing. So hopefully, Candace and everybody, technology makes sense. You'll figure this out pretty quickly. We don't use it all the time. It serves as a shortcut for getting numbers when we have to get numbers relatively quickly. My, my usual pedagogical method is we pose a problem, we pose a solution to the problem, we manually work through any mathematics that we need to work through to get that problem solved. Once we're comfortable with that manual calculation, we then go and let technology do it. Remember in 105 with the randomness, I gave you coins, I gave you cards, I gave you dice, we rolled, we spun, we drew, and then we're like, the hell with this. What if Max wants to buy a Lego men and there's 16 different ones? Now we use software to help us do the math because the math is too prohibitive. That's kind of my view here. It becomes the end piece of a puzzle. Just like automatic transmission. Hopefully you learn how to drive a stick shift too. Hopefully. Maybe. We'll talk about that later. All right. So that's materials. Any questions on materials, whether it's the book or the technology or the